Hey traders, checking in on the cryptocurrency space. So the Bitcoin bulls have been impressive the last couple of days. We bottomed out last week, checked in in reaction to the Walmart Litecoin fake news fiasco. And then the bulls have been in control the last two days since then. And multiple times I find myself saying, I'm really impressed by these bulls with the amount of rec recovery that we have seen. So at this point, we're now asking ourselves, is this a weekly bull flag? Let's check it out on the chart. So Bitcoin on the daily time frame, we hit our bottom of the flash dump at 42.8 thousand. We knew that was the key level. We topped out on the bounce. We came down. We tightened up 12 hour equilibrium, ended up breaking bear while well, it broke bull and then it broke bear because of the Walmart reaction. But I must admit that again, I am very impressed with these Bitcoin bulls. So back when we last checked in, we had bottomed out and we had started this bounce and we were looking for an hourly tightening range. And we did form an hourly equilibrium, but it favored the bulls. Why did it favor the bulls? Because we had a 50% plus retracement. And then look at this pullback. That's a bull flag pullback. If you look at the retracement. So here's how I measure this equilibrium. And this is a lesson on retracements. So from the high to the low, I want to know how much did we bounce? And the answer is almost 60%, right around that level. Okay, that's great. So then I want to know from the low of the bounce, how much retracement for our higher low, 382. That's why it's now still in equilibrium because it's a tightening range, but it favors the bulls. Had we pulled back 50% again, 50% plus, that's when it's anybody's game as far as where the equilibrium goes. But the fact that that higher low was set in bull flag territory, and then we just tightened up and broke bullish, that was one little clue that the bulls were, were, were remaining strong. From there, you just zoom out and we would have anticipated a four hour lower high compared to 46.9. But we just kept running right back up to that level. And the bull volume started pouring in right when we got to that resistance. So why is the volume getting high at that level? Because you have bears top fishing resistance and you have bulls buying and triggering some of the shorts to cover. So this chart is marching up and it's extended on the four hour time frame testing 46.9, and let's say I make a bearish entry, top fishing, 46.8, and I put my stop at 47.01. We pull back, ooh, maybe I made a good entry. Nope, just a higher low. Ooh, I almost stopped out. Just another hourly higher low, and now I stop out. So it's a, a good amount of both bull and bear volume occurring at the same level, and it was just bulls winning. And look at the hourly EMA 12 holding this entire move. So you will recall... If you've been watching these videos where we see sometimes where it's bulls in complete control and then the only way that the bears can do anything is just massive market sells. Usually when we break a resistance level, a bunch of market sells, we bottom out, that low is the low and then we slow grind back up. And usually we're looking at this on the five and 15 minute time frame when it happens. This is just a bigger picture example of that where we had a flash pullback news related and once that bottom was hit, that was it. And again, I would have been very cautious for the break of 42.8, but the bulls couldn't have done a better job of defending this support. So for me, it's, it's me reacting to the price as far as shifting my sentiment in the cryptocurrency space. And a number of things have taken place. Number one, I'm viewing this as a, a, a failed bear cross of the EMA 1226. And again, it was the, on the verge of the first bear cross since our bottom at 29. And that would have been notable to me. But these last two days, the bulls are essentially saying, no, we're not ready. It's pretty much a stick save by the goalie. That's a hockey analogy. Stick save by the goalie right on the line. And keeping that, in my opinion, keeping it from a bear cross. So now what do we do? Well, a lot of people like the three-day time frame for clarity. And we are anticipating, again, a three-day lower high compared to 53,000. But if we're going to be looking at retracements, engaging strength, how much have we now bounced over 50% retracement from this one very wide range of this daily candle? So significant recovery is the bottom line. Hourly uptrend is our guide. When we lose the hourly uptrend, we zoom out and scout a four hour higher low. Anything above 46.7 thousand will be a four hour higher low. And there are now going to be bulls, in my opinion, that are looking to enter next daily consolidation. So let's say I'm cautious as a bull and saying, eh, I'm not sure here. We might see more downside. We might see a monthly lower high. Now with this bounce, aggressive bulls are saying that aggressive bulls that are not in are saying, all right, well, next daily consolidation, I'm going to make an entry or two, and I'm going to put my stop under that low. 
Because we can make a simple statement. If 42.8 thousand support holds from here, and let's just say from here, meaning for the rest of the year, bulls keep absolute complete control. And we're not going to set a monthly lower high. We can't set a monthly lower high if that level is going to hold. Because by definition, we've got to break the low of this month, next month, for the monthly lower high to be set and for the equilibrium to continue to tighten up. So that's still possible. A lot could happen. We have to be watching the broader market and the potential for any fear in the broader market. We've seen some weakness and some pullback, but not fear. And just on that side note, Bitcoin has been giving some clues as far as sentiment in stocks. I do not feel that crypto is dictating what stocks do, but Bitcoin topped out and dumped on this day. And then the broader market pulled back for five days in a row from there. And then Bitcoin bottoms and starts bouncing on this day. And here we are, took an extra day here, but it's almost like a sentiment leader for the stock market. And obviously this is a very you know, limited sample size and we're only looking at the last eight days, but it's standing out to me to be watching crypto sentiment and see how it translates into the broader market. So again, if there's some kind of major dump in stocks, we can drop to a lower low and break 42.8. So that's obviously on the table, but because we have bounced so significantly, sentiment's remaining bullish in crypto. And the weekly time frame, again, back to our retracement tool, the weekly time frame, is this a possible bull flag? The answer is maybe, because we're in the gray zone. Again, a bull flag holding 382, great bull flag. A pullback of 50% or more, we scout equilibrium. Well, what if the pullback is 42% retracement? So we're in the mid 40s as far as our retracement, and it's the gray zone. It can see continuation. It's a little bit harder for the bulls to do so. And that's where we stand. And what's, signif what's significant to me is the EMA 12 on the weekly holding as well. And we're very likely to see weekly inside bars. Still got four days, but inside bars on a lot of weekly candles in crypto right now. But looking at some altcoins as well, I mean, looking at Link. Link is back testing and just bouncing off of this EMA support time and time again. Look at the way up before we topped out back in May. It just was consistently holding the EMAs and if we keep seeing altcoins and Bitcoin itself holding these EMAs on the weekly on these back tests, that's going to keep the bulls in control. Sushi's doing the same thing. Big drop, but continuously holding the EMAs. So it's standing out to me and shifting probabilities. So for me, these last two days, what has it done? It shifted probabilities where, you know, let's say I was 65% sure that a monthly lower high was going to form. That's now down to a 50-50 for me as far as whether a monthly equilibrium forms or not. We also have the rumors about the potential of an ETF before the end of the year. If that were to happen, probabilities instantly shift, and we're going to be looking back up towards the all-time high at that point. And keep in mind, a bullish ETF news headline, you're going to get the initial reaction, and by the initial reaction, I mean in the first 24 hours, as people jump in before the ETF and jump in on the hype, and a lot of people are going to market buy on that news and just get me in. And we'll see what kind of follow through we get from that. But then you have to also factor in the prolonged impact of the actual buying of the ETF from major players in the stock market world having a bullish impact on the price. So you're going to get an initial reaction and then a prolonged reaction. But that would be a catalyst that could lead us back towards the all-time highs without setting a monthly lower high. So... If we, you know, tighten up for a few weeks and that news rolls in in October or November, then maybe we fend off monthly consolidation. So it's a big win the last two days, in my opinion. And I'm very curious to see where do we top out? Where do we, when we lose the four hour uptrend, I'm going to be watching for, you know, okay, what was the final retracement on this bounce before we topped out? And every little higher high that we see from here just creates more space for the bulls to work with next time we have daily consolidation. Bitcoin dominance chart is bouncing. It's not significant. It's enough to pay attention because it's been through periods where Bitcoin is going up as well. And this has happened a few times recently. We know generally Bitcoin dominance going up means altcoins. It means crypto generally is dropping and the altcoins are dropping faster and the dominance chart goes up. The dominance chart this time is going up as crypto is going up. 
And that has happened in very brief windows of time over the last year. So I'm watching to see, can it stick? Can Bitcoin take the lead role without a news catalyst? And if we look at the four hour time frame again, it's been all bulls from the 13th at 12. And we look at the dominance chart in the 13th at 12. So this period right here, Bitcoin was going up and the dominance was going up as well. Bitcoin was outperforming altcoins during this period. And again, it's not significant. It's for less than 24 hours. So I'm keeping a close eye on it, but this is an attempt to hold the monthly low here and fend off a bear flag. So we'll see if they're successful. It's still a very clear daily downtrend, still daily EMA resistance. So not much is changing at this point, but it just has me keeping an eye out for any shift in the correlations and the patterns that we've been recognizing and following between alts and Bitcoin over the last year plus. So I'm paying attention, but there's not enough for me to say that any meaningful change has taken place. It's still pretty much when crypto is strong, alts are going up faster, the dominance chart is dropping. When crypto is weak, alts are dropping faster and the dominance chart is going up. And again, a news ETF headline would change that. ETH, so also trying to make its way, but again, we haven't gotten to the high of the bounce yet. Bitcoin broke the high of the bounce from that September 7th dump, liquidation we'll call it, leverage liquidation, 3583 is that top. And here we are still under that level. We're right there, but just the fact that we're under it, Bitcoin's top was 4788 and we just got 1% over that level. So ETH still has that resistance in play. We're a bit extended on the hourly time frame as we are heading to that resistance level. And we're watching for a daily lower high, anything under 4030. And if we're measuring our retracements, we can see the retracement is fairly similar to Bitcoin. And it's because Ethereum had a stronger initial bounce, but tightening range still. And if we get over that 3580s resistance, it'll be a good sign for the bulls. And again, what we need to see, if we're gonna say weekly bull flag, is top out on this bounce wherever that happens, set a daily high or low, and confirm a higher high. And that will be a big shot of confidence. Look at the weekly EMA 12. I mean, this is a cup and handle. I think I said that in a video recently. You can make the argument this is a cup and handle. Simple statement. If $3,000 holds on Ethereum, this is a weekly cup and handle. Why is it a cup and handle? Because you have all-time high, pullback, rounded bottom, unable to break the all-time high by less than 10% in crypto, 10% or less is close enough for me. If that's Apple, it's not close enough because Apple's not nearly as volatile. And then that's a bull flag and it's holding weekly EMA. So looking at the retracement here, gray zone, same deal. So I'm going to be curious for a number of things. Number one, how does the weekly inside bar, making an assumption that that's what's going to happen, but how does that break next week? Can the bulls Set a higher low and higher high next week, into next week. So definitely a shot of confidence in the bulls in the short term and raising an eyebrow for the potential of weekly bull flags out there. ETH BTC is still tight on the daily equilibrium here. It's a really good one. It is worth paying attention to this. Why? Because the last time we had a very clear equilibrium, granted it was a lot tighter, but that was a very clear signal to be bullish ETH. So we've got our high, we've got our low, lower high, higher low, lower high, higher low. Anything under 752 is just another lower high. We may trade within this tightening range for another three to six days, but watch the direction that it breaks. Generally speaking, bull break here would be beneficial for crypto. If the patterns that we've been paying attention to for the last year plus are continuing themselves. And again, what happened when ETH broke August 30th? What did Bitcoin do on August 30th? I don't know. Went up. They made this leg up. So the relationship between ETH BTC pairings has been when it breaks bull, crypto's going up, Ethereum's going up faster than Bitcoin. Seoul, USDT. So Seoul had some bad news and I don't care about the fundamentals as far as is it, you know, legitimate concerns, is it, just FUD? Is it 
Does it matter bigger picture? What I do know is it matters on the charts because it led to a more extreme drop and it led to relative weakness comparative to other altcoins for a prolonged period of time over the last 48 hours. So I was looking for a daily higher low to form off of EMA 12. And had I been looking to make an entry, I would have stopped out because of that extra bearish sentiment. And it kept the BTC pairing real weak. We did have an hourly downtrend support line that's worth paying attention to because it held a bunch of times. And at this point, we're watching still for a daily higher low. Anything above 128 is a daily higher low. We've got a pattern of a lower high every day for six days. A daily inside bar is very likely to form today. If the inside bar breaks bullish, our new daily higher low is 142.60. And we're then scouting a lower high compared to 216. Why? Because the size of the retracement is significant enough that a daily lower high is the more likely scenario. And then we would have to be cautious of a confirmed daily downtrend which would indicate weekly consolidation would then be underway. We've got a pattern of a higher low every week for eight weeks in a row right now. So daily inside bar and weekly inside bar. Still watching for a bounce in the short term, but then I will be scouting that daily lower high. So BTC is similar with the daily inside bar, lots of space for a lower high to form next time we bounce and the weekly time frame breakout and pretty extended. So keep an eye on Seoul because it's likely to continue giving volatility over the next week plus. As far as looking at our other names, we've got ICP leading the way here, Theta, FTT. No one's really standing out massively comparative to everybody else. It's a grouping of names between 3 to 6% or so. But overall, Bitcoin, impressive. Impressive recovery. Let's see how long we can maintain the four-hour uptrend. When it is lost, we zoom out. We scout a daily higher low. Bulls that did not make entries are going to scout a daily higher low. I've still got my full Ethereum swing. I only have half a Bitcoin swing because I did stop out here when I was away from the computer. So I may be interested in scouting a daily higher low entry. And keep an eye out for ETF news. And again, a lot of people will be looking to market by that news reaction if we do get a favorable headline. And just have a game plan. You don't want to market buy and then it pulls back on the five minute time frame and you have no idea what to do. You want to have a game plan. I will market buy. I'll sell half of my position after X amount to the upside to drop my break even to make me more comfortable. Have a game plan established. What am I going to do if an ETF is announced as going through? All right. Do good things. Appreciate you tuning in and we will check back in shortly. Have a good rest of your day. The marigolds are taking a long time to flower. And I may have shown this in another video. This, this orange, what I thought was a fungus, where it just takes over everything and chokes it out. But I don't think it's a fungus because I'm pretty sure these are little flowers. So this might be just a plant, unless these are some kind of spore sacks. I've got to ask, there's a, a good Facebook group in the area regarding plants, and they'll know. My favorite weeds that flower, I guess weeds would just mean any natural plant in the area, native, are these cardinals, and I forget if this is goldenrod or golden seal, I get them mixed up. But they just pop up all over and so anywhere that they're popping up, I'm just letting grow out and not mowing with the hope that next year around there'll be even more. So that means a lot of long grass. Leaves are just starting to fall. Plant some stuff in the greenhouse next month.